Hey guys, Banking here. Now, boy, do I wish I was at San Diego Comic Con this weekend. There has been some amazing news from there, um, particularly regarding things like Suicide Squad, Deadpool, um, what else? Uh, there's a new Green Lantern movie coming out, um, which is going to be focusing on the Green Lantern Corps. I'm not excited until we find out that Kilowog's in it. Kilowog's not in it, I'm not interested. I love Kilowog. Anyway, I'm kidding, of course. I'll be excited anyway. Um, and also, what else? There was another thing. Oh yeah, Legend of Korra is getting a comic book series. How brilliant is that? But the one thing that got me the most excited that I've seen, I mean, I've seen some rubbish leaked copies of some trailers, but this has been properly released, is the Batman vs. Superman trailer. And this looks amazing. Um, we see the effects look great, aside from one of Batman sort of being CGI and jumping onto a building and sort of moving his arms sort of in that pose from the Dark Knight Returns cover while the lightning strikes. I think they're kind of trying to be a bit Frank Miller-ish. I'm a bit worried about where that might head, actually. But the scene where Superman jumps onto the Batmobile and then pulls off the doors, uh, and then Batman stands up and faces him. It just looks so epic. There looks like there's just going to be an epic confrontation. And one thing which I really like the look of is we're seeing a lot of conversations between characters in the trailer. Um, and you might think, what? Who the hell gets excited about conversations? But the thing is, there was very little in the way of character development, particularly regarding Superman in Man of Steel. We saw quite a lot of his history, but we never actually got to know his personality at all. We didn't get to know the real Clark Kent, or Kal El, or whatever. But this time, we it looks like we're really going to get to know him. I mean, we have this conversation with him and uh, Martha Kent, and she's like, um, you can be there hero, be there, saviour, be there, god, whatever, or you can be none of this stuff, you owe these people nothing. Uh, I wouldn't say that he owes them nothing, considering he was raised there, and he owes the Kents at least for taking them in, and the government at least for not, for inexplicably not going after his, uh, his escape pod when it first landed and dissecting him, but perspective. I think it was a really... It looks like there's going to be some really good character development in this, and I want to get to know these characters. And Gal Gadot, or Gadot, I'm not quite sure how her name's pronounced, she looks freaking fantastic as Wonder Woman. I mean, people complained for some reason that they thought she was too skinny, but I read a lot of comic books. You know this if you follow my channel. Um, She's muscly, yes, but she's not a huge steroided monster, uh, Wonder Woman. And Al Gadot is muscly, but she looks like a regular woman in many ways, just like Wonder Woman does. She's got the right figure, in my opinion, and the right face. She fucking looks exactly like Wonder Woman. And she looks like she's going to be insanely badass with some of the quick bits of action scenes we've seen her in. And we know from things like Fast and Furious and stuff, she's quite a good actress and she's pretty badass in everything she's in. So, I really think that they've hit gold on casting her. I mean, we'll see. I might be wrong, but it looks great. And, um, that fleck looks pretty great, actually. I mean, we haven't seen that much, so I might be wrong. I wasn't really expecting that much of Ben Affleck, really. I mean, I haven't seen very much with him in, and the stuff I have seen, I didn't think he was that good in, but he looks the business as Batman, and we, we've sort of seen a little bit about why he would want to go against Superman, like we see, uh, I'm assuming it was Zod's eye beams in that fight in Metropolis, destroying a building which turns out to be one of Bruce Wayne's, and he's sort of looking in shock horror and running and protecting this girl, and he's like, how many good guys are left after 20 years in Gotham, and how many good guys stayed that way? Um, presumably sort of referencing characters like Harley Dent and things, starting off as like saviors for the city and ending up as villains. Um, um, 
I do think that this is extremely powerful because this is an older version of Batman. He knows really when a character or why a character is more likely to stop being heroic, as it were, and how, and he resultantly, because this has happened so much, he doesn't trust Superman at all. And I'm hoping that they, I'm sure they're going to end up teaming up towards the end. Um, that's just got to happen because you can't just end up with them still being enemies and then go into a Justice League film. So that's going to happen, definitely. But some of the scenes that look interesting in the trailer, <clears throat> and I'm not quite sure where to go from for them, is there's some scenes that sort of look like they're sort of almost post or sin apocalyptic. Like we see a destroyed Wayne, Wayne Manor and a sort of Batman in a sort of cape fighting some soldiers and stuff in a sort of wasteland area. And I'm kind of half wondering if these are actually part of the film or if these are actually, if anything, teasing the Justice League film. Now, let me explain here. I'm wondering if this film is going to have a character like Harbinger in it and these are going to be visions of the future that sort of appear towards the end of this film, and this is going to be a future that the Justice League movie might be about averting. All these heroes have to team up together to stop these visions from coming to pass, like maybe stop some world-ending threat which they know is going to appear. And I think there could be some very interesting story possibilities as to where they can go from there. So, all in all, it's a very interesting trailer, and... Again, it looks like there's going to be a heavy Joker involvement here, even if the Joker's not actually in the film. It looks like his presence or existence is really going to be felt, and I really am looking forward to seeing him in it, uh, if he is. But uh, one more thing, I noticed um, Thomas Wayne being played by the guy who played um, Sam and Dean's dad in Supernatural. Uh, what's his name? Is it Jeffrey Dean Morgan, or is that another guy? I'll have to look that up. I think it's something like Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Um, and, yeah, that seems like a pretty good choice. But kind of a shame, really, that they went for him because... Oh, it is Jeffrey Dean Morgan. Because it's just such a small part for such a good actor. And it seems like good actors generally, or underrated actors in a lot of films lately, seem to still be being given underrated parts. Um... Like we had Katie McGrath in um, in Jurassic World. She was hardly in it, and then she was killed. And um, one other one um, in Grimm, I know it's a TV show. We had James Frain as um, Eric Renard. He was killed way too early on in his story arc. Actually, that happens with James Frain a lot. Actually, that happened to him in True Blood as well, and in Sleepy Hollow. He was in like one episode of that, and then he was killed. <laughs> Poor James Frain. But yeah, I really hope, I, well, I really feel kind of almost sorry for Jeffrey Dean Morgan in that. But in the event that we get some kind of Earth 2 type event, some kind of multiple Earths crossover, seeing Jeffrey Dean Morgan as a sort of Earth 2 Batman after the death of Bruce or as a Flashpoint Batman, I think that would be fantastic. Fantastic casting, and I kind of had my fingers crossed as to they went for him simply because they thought, what if we can get this done, this would be perfect. But again, this is just really speculation, and the whole film, is, this whole trailer has just got me really, really excited. Except Lex Luthor. I'm not sure how I feel about this Lex Luthor. I mean, I'm sure that the hair we see is just a wig. But where he's saying, the red capes are coming, the red capes are coming, at the end, his voice sounded so daft, if I'm honest. It didn't seem like we're getting the most serious portrayal of Luthor, and that's really a shame, because Luthor's always been a very serious character in the comic books, but he's had quite a few non-serious portrayals in film and television, particularly in live-action films. It's weird, because... Normally you associate animated stuff with being more silly, but with Lex Luthor, the animated portrayals, aside from in the abysmal Brainiac attacks, to my knowledge, every animated portrayal of Lex Luthor I've ever seen has been a really dark um, businessman, 
serious villain who's super intelligent. And I get the impression that this guy is this egomaniac type character and is a highly influential villain. But I worry that they might be going down a slightly sillier path. And as much as I've complained that DC movies have really not bothered to balance the dark with the light, they've just gone too dark, um, I think that Lex Luthor should be dark. He should be Lex Luthor. We shouldn't get the red tips are coming, the red tips are coming. Uh, mind you, I might be wrong. I might be completely 100% wrong about this. Um, yeah. But yeah, I've, I've had a lot of criticism, really. Well, a lot of trolling, if I'm honest, from a comment I made complaining that um, DC movies are dark, are too dark. Um, and people saying, you clearly don't read the comics, man. You're just some dweeb who doesn't like things to be too dark. And my response to that is, I've read a lot of comics, and if you look at my shelf over there, it's full of them. I'd move my laptop, but that would involve disconnecting my microphone. Um, but there's loads of them. Hang on, I'll just pick up a bunch now. Um, here, here's a huge bunch of comic books for you to prove that I read comic books. So, I do know a lot about these characters. And I know a lot about their settings. And I also think that both the films and many, but not all, of the comic books lately uh, are going... They're trying to sort of specifically set themselves in one band or another. Like, most of the books I'm reading are trying to specifically set themselves to be dark, and just dark, because they're so obsessed with trying to get out of the campiness that some people still associate them with. Other comic books, like Starfire, seem to be focusing on not being dark and just being comedies. And I'm not sure, really, that anyone's got it right. I think that in order to make a story enjoyable, you need to have a balance of both with these kinds of characters. You can't be too dark. Um, because you'll just end up making your story depressing, it'll stop being exciting, it'll stop in entertaining the readers, and it'll stop being something to enjoy, and it'll be the same with the film. Um, you watch a Batman film because of the badassery, because of the awesomeness, because of the excitement, and because of the darkness, and because of the vigilantism. But the darkness and the vigilantism are just a part of it. It's because these characters are great. It's the characters you're looking for that need to be great. Um, for example, I've been watching an absolutely abysmal TV show. I said, uh, I'm going to, it's the same one I'm going to be reviewing later called Kempfer. And it's a terrible show. Um, it has great characters. And even though the show is freaking awful, the characters keep you watching it. Um, if we look at, um, say, uh, Teen Titans, there were some drastic changes in between episodes. Sometimes they were really light and poopy and funny. Other times they were really dark and really insanely dark, some of the Teen Titans episodes, like the ones involving Trigon. And other times they were just like a sort of fun adventure. But the characters were consistent all the way through, and the characters made the whole series enjoyable. And that's what I think it needs to focus less on being dark and more on being true to its characters, to their roots, in the best way possible, I think. That's what Batman vs Superman needs to do. And I worry that with Lex Luthor, they might not be doing that. And, again, you can still have dark characters in a funny setting, or in an adventurous setting. In any setting, you can still have funny characters, and you can still have really dark characters. You can still make it work. Teen Titans, the original series, is a classic, perfect example of this. But that is completely off topic and nothing to do with the trailer. Um, one more thing that is to do with the trailer, 
and nothing to do with what on ever on earth I went off on then, that tangent, is I'm a little worried about the obsessiveness with Frank Miller. I mean, in, in the Christopher Nolan films, we saw a lot of, um, a lot of elements of things like uh, Batman Year One and The Dark Knight Returns, and these seem to be elements that sort of constantly seem to go through, even animation and everything, but they're things that every everyone making live action films, um, even some of the older ones, they crave Miller, they seem to love Miller, and I'm just looking at this thinking, yes, Dark Knight Returns was a great book, and Batman Year One was a great book. I thoroughly enjoyed them. But at the same time, they were quite dark. But I loved the darkness, and I loved the political commentary in them. And I did think... Yeah, anyway. Then we got All-Star Batman and Robin. And that was abysmal. It was awful. Batman was a frigging child-kidnapping sociopath. And the Joker didn't act, didn't act anything like the Joker. The stories were kind of dragged out. It was just awful, and what they did to Vicky Vale in that series was just shameful. Um, there's something clearly was mentally wrong with Frank Miller at the time. And we see a lot of the same stuff with The Dark Knight Strikes Again, uh, where this is the same version of Batman being a complete psychopath, and freaking cutting an X, I think it was, into Lex Luthor's face. Um, ugh. Oh, there's just so much wrong with this. I am Batman freaking murders people in some of the, uh, some of Frank Miller's stuff. Um, there's just so much wrong with Frank Miller's work after Batman Year One and The Dark Knight Strikes Again that I really think you need to distance yourself from him quite substantially and focus on so many other good stories out there, and so many other different writers and artists' work, you don't need to use one source, and I really get the impression, not just from the design of that logo in Batman vs Superman, that's old stuff, but also from the scene where there's the lightning in the background, that they're going all out with Millerisms, and to paraphrase Yoda, once you start along the Miller path, forever will it dominate your destiny. But don't start along the Miller path. Stop walking. Just, just run away from the Miller path. Get away. We cannot have Psycho Batman in a Justice League film. Because he's not Batman. His mannerisms in the books, in the more recent books, like the Asbar and Batman Strikes Again, and the same version of Batman also appeared in Batman Spawn, it was set in the same universe. That Batman is so different, but most fans don't even call him Batman. In fact, the Linkara review called him Crazy Steve. Um, so, okay, well off topic now. The trailer looks great. I completely stopped talking about the trailer about ten minutes ago, so... I better just um I better just stop talking now. So um feel free to like and subscribe or even dislike because I probably dislike due to the horrendous tangent I went on. And uh leave your comments below. Tell me what you thought of the trailer. Um tell me what you think of these films in general if you want to. And I'll be back later on today. Well, no, not later on today. I'll be filming it later on today. I'll be back on Thursday with my Kemper review. Cheerio.